Chapter 1, Coaching Yourself. Hi, Larry here. In the last module, we focused on emotional intelligence. The connection we made was that if we continually increase our EQ, then we'll be able to continually perform at a higher level, be more fulfilled, and have more fun. In other words, emotional intelligence is directly linked to optimal performance. Not bad. So, go out there and work on your EQ, and we'll see you later. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I'm, I'm sorry. I guess a fair question is, how do you do it? How do you do the daily work of improving your EQ? How do you get to that optimal performance state more often? That's what this module is all about. We're going to focus on the practice, the actual how-to of controlling your emotions and motivating yourself, including what causes emotions, how to control your thinking in order to control your emotions, how we all make stuff up and how that can lead to all sorts of problems. Finally, we're going to give you practice at helping you understand and control your thinking. To start, let's think about the work of improving emotional intelligence. Here's our premise. Individuals who have high EQs, who are optimal performers, tend to be great coaches of themselves. What do we mean? Well, think of what a great coach does. They deeply understand what motivates the individuals they coach. They understand how to get optimal performance and how to help those individuals bounce back from adversity. The great coach is the role that you play when you step back and reflect on who you are, why you're here, and what motivates you. The only difference is that you're coaching yourself. You're coaching yourself when you ask, what am I feeling and why? You're coaching yourself when you think, I can do this. Pretty simple, really. And the fact is that you've been coaching yourself most of your life, ever since you were five years old, telling yourself that there are no monsters under that bed. But here's the problem. If we don't develop and nurture our ability to positively coach ourselves, it can become destructive. What does this mean? Think of it this way. Just like in sports, there are positive coaches and negative coaches. If we don't work on the skill of coaching ourselves, we can become one of the worst nightmare negative kinds of coach. Here's an example of negative self-coaching. Ask yourself if it sounds familiar. Let's listen in on Jay's self-coaching. I'm such an idiot. All I do is mope around, and I can't get anything done. What a slacker. Every project I finish ends up in the dumper. I'm amazed that they even keep me. I should just quit and go back to working for my dad. Pretty painful to listen to. And the fact is, we would never coach someone else like that. But we often find ourselves coaching ourselves that way. The point is that we can still be tough on ourselves, but great positive self-coaches are also positive and optimistic, aware of how they're feeling and why. Understand how different situations affect them. And most importantly, they're skilled at coaching themselves from one emotion to another, from a negative feeling to a positive one. For example, let's hear how Ellen handles a tough situation. I am so frustrated. I just want to slam someone, anyone's head against the wall. All day long, clients are late, later, and then really late. What do they think I am, their personal servant? But now wait, why am I so upset? I've had scheduling problems before and rolled with them. What's different about today? <sighs> take a breath before you take it out on someone and figure it out. What is different about today? Nothing, okay? It's just everyone takes advantage of me being nice. Well, okay, so I guess getting a call about the credit card payment being overdue, well, that started the day. So that really got me into a foul mood. So it's not really clients being late. That's part of the job. It was that credit card thing. Yeah, it was the card thing that started it. It just reminded me that our budget is tight, and I guess we're, we're handling it. So if it's the credit card thingy that has me upset, then I just need to put that aside and not take it out on everyone else. And it's really not that big of a deal anyway, is it? See what I mean? 
In essence, she coached herself from being upset to being calm. And that's the ability we can all get better at. And this module will provide the understanding and the tools to help that happen. Ready to dive in? Rebecca is going to start us off with this exercise, and I'll be back with you later. Thanks, Larry. Now we are going to dig into the tools of coaching ourselves. To start, let's listen again to Ellen coach herself. Note that one of the first things that Ellen does is stop and ask, why am I so upset? Let's hear it again. But now wait, why am I so upset? I've had scheduling problems before and rolled with them. What's different about today? <sighs> take a breath before you take it out on someone and figure it out. What is different about today? Next, Ellen starts to narrow in on what she really thinks is causing her upset. Well, okay, so I guess getting a call about the credit card payment being overdue, well, that started the day. So that really got me into a foul mood. So it's not really clients being late. That's part of the job. It was that credit card thing. Identifying the true cause of emotion, the why am I feeling this way, is a crucial but often overlooked step. In fact, instead of exploring why we feel bad, sad, or angry, many times we just take it out on the next person we run into. And of course, that starts a chain reaction as that person gets upset and takes it out on the first person they run into, and so on and so on. Identifying the true cause of our emotions is an important first step to stopping the madness and helping us get back on track with emotions that are positive, or at least neutral. Okay, to help with your assignment, I want to give you a term and a definition that we will be using a lot over the next few modules. The term is activating event. We define activating events as the events that we encounter in life. An activating event is something that happens in our sphere of awareness. If we are not aware of it, it's not an activating event for us. For example, a fly in the next room is not an activating event. But should that fly enter the room that we are in and we notice it, that's an activating event. Activating events are just what happens. They can be described in objective terms without any opinions or evaluations placed on them. Events can be small, like an argument, a birthday, or a barking dog, or they can be big, like marriage, having kids, or the death of a loved one. In Ellen's case, late clients and a call from the credit card company are both activating events. An example of an activating event is the weather. Now, people tend to see the weather as either good or bad. As humans, we have opinions about the weather, but they are just that, opinions. Two individuals can see the same thunderstorm, and one thinks it's a curse, and the other thinks it's a blessing. But rain is just rain. It's an activating event. Make sense? So here is your assignment. Using the Activating Events Worksheet in your workbook, your assignment is to identify activating events in your life. Here is how. When you feel a strong emotion, try to figure out as precisely as possible the activating event that you think is causing the emotion. Remember, the key thing we want to focus on is that activating events are just events. The weather is just the weather, without any opinion or evaluation placed on it. Focus on the events and try to leave your opinion and judgments out of the picture for now. The worksheet will guide you through the details, and we'll see you in the next chapter.